I'm interested in hearing you expand on uh, this following statement. Um, to paraphrase, you highlighted the fact that you are a man of Indian descent and your wife is a woman of Mexican and Venezuelan descent, implying it's impossible or at least highly unlikely that uh, you are or could be racist. Um, I'm concerned you use your Indian heritage as a diversity card to shield yourself from criticism about racially or ethnically problematic comments and or stances that you've made or taken in the past. Um, is this not opposite but parallel to the stereotype that all people who are white are racist? Um, a claim I don't agree with um, and one that I'll concede some of the leftists you disagree with do employ for their purposes. Um, I just kind of want to hear your thoughts on that, hear you expand on that. I think um, I have never, I'm familiar with the view, but I don't share it, that people of color intrinsically cannot be racist. This is actually a doctrine of the left. And I don't agree with it because I think that racism is a doctrine of racial superiority, inferiority, of racial denigration. So obviously in principle it's possible for anyone to be a racist. Now, that being said, we always have to balance what someone says with a contextual use of what they said and with a fair attribution of the label. Because I think you would agree that if you go around calling people racist, just because they say things you don't agree with, or they, say they, they, they have a disputed interpretation of something that on, let's just take a topic, let's just take for example slavery or a topic like that. Open debate is not racist. Open debate is very healthy in an academic community. Racial denigration is racist. So I ask you in fairness, I've been up here now speaking. Uh, if you believe the posters and the dissenters and the comments and the stand for paper and so on, I, you might have expected me to stand up and give you 45 minutes of racial invective. So a very good way to test these things is to ask you, have you heard me say anything tonight that you would consider racist? And if not, why would you even raise that term in my connection? Um, so, I will concede to you, um, I did not hear anything explicitly racist, and I, I do have to say I appreciate that. Thank you. So I'm for more of a mixed economy, and I am for Medicare for all. I believe... And Doesn't I, that seem, it seems awful, it seems like you want to become an old person. Why do you want to become an old person? No, Why do you want to use old ideas like socialism? No, that's giving everyone the right to health care, health insurance. And right now, our current system, we have 600,000 bankruptcies, people, people file, file for bankruptcy under our current system. Our current system is not cost effective. It cost, I agree. Uh, what was $33 trillion over a 10 year period from right now. And a recent study by the Mercatus Center actually found that the Medicare for All system in the Senate would save $2.1 trillion over a 10 year period from 2022 to 2031. So why can't you get behind that? Well, uh, when we were talking about the costs of these systems, one has to be very careful. I was promised certain costs for Obamacare, and it was, there was a lot of fuzzy math because the taxes kicked in early and the benefits didn't kick in quite so early. So the, the question is twofold. One, you're asking economically, you're saying that the current health care regime is not efficient, and uh, therefore the socialist regime would be more efficient. That may actually be the case. That's not an argument for socialism, though. That's an argument for liberalization. That's for for liberalizing the markets, making prices much more apparent to both the consumers and the service providers, to opening up uh, what are now virtual monopolies for health insurance companies. Uh, and, and fortunately, by the way, this administration it has, uh, around the edges, worked on all of those things. There is also a moral argument as well, which is that people ought to be free, man ought to be free, and if uh, health care is going to have to be rationed, I would rather it be rationed by me and my freedom of choice than by some bureaucratic board somewhere in the federal government. We are already rationing care by the size of our wallets. We, we ought to ration care no, by the size of our wallets? We already ration our care by of the size of Of course we don't. We have a robust social safety net. We have Medicare and Medicaid. We have, a, we have a very generous social safety net, and nobody dies. I mean, it's one of the most absurd lies of people pushing socialist health care, that people are dying in the streets. That's absurd. Anybody can walk into an emergency room. Nobody is dying in the streets in the United States and hasn't in the modern era. Tens of thousands of people are dying in the U.S. You can keep repeating your lie, but it, it doesn't make it true. Show me the person who is denied entrance stuff. to an emergency room, my friend. Show me the person. I haven't seen them. Hey, I'm for facts over feelings. 
you, you can repeat good slogans as well as bad slogans, but they remain slogans nonetheless. And I'm explaining to you the way the healthcare regime actually works. 